Hello everyone, my name is Ming. If you are a Fuji user, have you ever wondered what is the dynamic range setting on Fuji cameras? What is dynamic range 100%, 200%, 400%? What does it mean? What, how, how does it work? So today in this video, I am going to talk about this setting because the first time I picked up a Fuji X-T2, I think this setting confused me a little bit. Um, just to understand what this does and how this if that applies to raw files or just JPEG files so yeah I think there is a little bit confusion around that setting so I'm going to address that today in this video let me first start by talking about how this setting works so you probably already noticed that uh, dynamic range 200% is available only when your ISO is 400 or above and uh, dynamic range 400% is available only when your ISO is 800 or above. So why is that? Uh, let's assume you are shooting at ISO 400 and you are making the exposure. There is some overexposed area, some highlights in your photo. And if you are shooting with dynamic range 200%, basically what the camera is going to try to make a uh, one stop lower exposure by going with a lower ISO. So uh, let's say your ISO is 400, then your camera will go to ISO 200. So that way uh, it will make another lower exposed photo and grab the highlight area and combine into your ISO 400 photo. So basically in your ISO 400 photo you have uh, mid-tone shadows uh, captured uh, at ISO 400 level but the overexposed highlight area is captured at ISO 200 level. So that's why uh, dynamic range 200% is only available when you are at ISO 400 or above because that's where you can go one stop lower to ISO 200. If you are shooting at ISO 200 because you cannot go one stop lower um, ISO wise so that's why you can only shoot at dynamic range 100% same thing with the dynamic range 400% so you have to shoot at least ISO 800 to enable dynamic range 400% let's assume you are shooting at ISO 800 and you make an exposure there is some overexposed highlight area now your camera will go back two stops it can go back two stops to ISO 400 and ISO 200 basically lower the exposure and uh, expose the highlight area and use that underexposed highlight area combined into your original ISO 800 exposure so that way your photo uh, the shadows and midtones you're captured at ISO 800 level but the highlight area is captured at a much lower ISO 200, ISO 400 level and then combine these together that's how it makes dynamic range 400%. Now that sounds fantastic but the big question is does this setting apply to raw photos or does it only apply to JPEGs? Let's find out. Alright now let's take a look at the photos. So I captured this uh, window and as you can see this area is overexposed so now let's uh, firstly take a look at the jpeg files so this is the jpeg file i took at iso 800 and the dynamic range setting is 100 percent so please notice this string here um, and the sky here is all overexposed there is no details no colors in there and then i captured another photo this one and this photo is uh, still ISO 800, but I have dynamic range setting at 400%. Uh, so you can see the string becomes a little bit clear, and I have blue sky here. So compared to this photo, this is the ISO 800 dynamic range 100%, and this is 800, ISO 800 dynamic range 400%. So as you can see, it retains more details in the highlight area so uh, looks like it applies to JPEG files now let's look at raw files so this is the raw file that I took at ISO 800 dynamic range 100% as you can see um, the details are overexposed here um, and then this is another photo 
uh, another raw file that I took ISO 800 dynamic range 400% but I don't see any difference so this guy here ISO 800 dynamic range 100% and this guy dynamic range 400% both raw files and I don't see a difference so it looks like the uh, dynamic range setting doesn't apply to raw files now let's also take a look at uh, Lightroom see if Lightroom makes a difference all right so I have this photo uh, this is uh, ISO 800 dynamic range 100% and this is uh, ISO 800 dynamic range 400% as you can see still no difference between these two photos so the dynamic range setting seems only to apply on JPEG files for me I just leave the dynamic range setting at 100% for two reasons the first reason is most of the time I shoot at lowest ISO uh, so that's ISO 200 natively on Fuji X-T2 so that means I can't enable dynamic range 200% or 400% the other reason is um, this setting doesn't apply to raw files so if I open up a files if I open up a raw file in Lightroom or Capture One Pro then um, I can't see these uh, exposure blending effect uh, I still have to work with the original exposure so that's why I just leave the dynamic range setting at 100% but if you are shooting mostly JPEGs I can see this setting can help you because uh, it can save you a little bit time to do uh, exposure blending you just capture one photo and the a processor in the camera will uh, process these photos and combine the overexposed area for you I can see that's a, a really nice benefit alright guys that's it from me today I hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my youtube channel for more photography tutorials and tips just like this one alright I hope you have a fantastic day and see you next time